In recent years, the hype surrounding the streetwear scene has been booming, especially amongst the younger generation. Brands such as Supreme, Palace, Off-White and Patter are some of the most popular streetwear labels that sell out regularly. Drops happen almost every week with prices ranging from around £40 for a Supreme box logo tee to upwards of £300 for an off-white hoodie. The hyped items are seriously limited and there's a real pressure to stay on trend. But the big question is, where are these younger people, sometimes as young as 12 or 13, getting the money from? I'm Josh from The Soul Supply and over the course of this documentary, we are going to explore the growing hype around the streetwear culture, but more importantly, how young hypebeats are able to fund their addictions. Our first stop is Supreme London where they are launching the MC Escher collaboration. I got my first palace thing from uh, Christmas money and then I just sold bits and gained all the money. I learned £200 from my parents. And then from £200 I kept coming supreme and then gradually and gradually I made more and more profit and then I was able to pay back off my mum and dad but I still had money for myself so then from there on I just kept on coming supreme and making more and more profit. I think the most I've, I've spent is roughly about 900 in a single time, yeah. Not a lot, I only spend like sort of less than 200 I never buy a lot from the drops. Probably, yeah, like, there are people who are here all the time that people, like, look forward to seeing and talking about what they've got, like, what they've caught and other stuff, so I think it's a thing where you want to stay on top and stay constant and be, like, up to date with the garments you've got and that. I guess you could say for, for someone as young as me, like, you can't, I mean, you can, but at the same time, you can't just, like, go outside and, you know, not be wearing something, I guess, I guess you could say fashionable. Well, for me, I'm, I love my fashion a lot, so for me, obviously, not be wearing something nice, it, I kind of like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just like a part of me, it's a, yeah, it's a part of me like just to wear something nice, you know. It seems that not only are young people getting money from their parents to fund their purchases, the pressure to stay on trend is real, and it's all about being in the scene and being fashionable. But what is it that's driving a myriad of young people to jump on the streetwear bandwagon? We headed down to Palace Skateboards to get answers. Celebrities and like hip-hop artists, I think they're the most influential. Famous people, I guess, because you see them wearing it and yeah, yeah I think you want to be like them, I guess. Famous people and celebrities have always been instrumental in driving the fashion scene, but I've never seen it on as big a scale as I am now. I wanted to know how the scene has grown in the last couple of years, why it's so important to be a part of and why people are getting into it as young as they are. To answer that, I needed to speak to someone who was at the heart of the streetwear community to put things into perspective. So we hit up Palace Talk UK admin and social media influencer, Jed Braley. How did you first come into contact with streetwear and decide, you know, this is something that I want to follow? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I just think three of my friends just found out about um, Palace and that. I always known about Supreme, just from like rappers and that, really, like Tyler Greater, like Supreme and that. In old videos, we always used to like, that kind of thing, but then Palace, I don't know, we just ended up going down to the drop about two years ago mm -hmm. and just realising that it's something cool, something where you can be different from other people and separate yourself from like, you know, just the normal, from everyone else kind of thing, it just all went from there really, where it just gained more interest, started buying more pieces, and now here I am kind of thing. <laughs> so it's kind of snowballed from there and there. Yeah, yeah. All right, so a lot of people that we spoke to have mentioned that whole social media factor is very much driving streetwear culture. Would you agree with that? I'd say definitely social media has a big like impact on things and it plays like a big role in everything because like that's how like hype is created and you know how people actually find out about new stuff. Yeah. But then at the same time I'd say like a lot of it is to do with just actually being there, like the community kind of thing. Yeah. Everyone like has a shared interest and you can tell it in real life kind of thing. Yeah. And it's kind of means more when it's in real life and you see someone or share something with someone in real life you think that you have something in common with rather than yeah. social media but I still say social media is probably the biggest factor especially these days with like marketing yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of thing 100% yeah. okay and you're one of the moderators or admins of Palace Talk right? yeah so you've probably like, seen the game from like a bird's eye view from where you are how have you seen it change from when you first got involved to now in terms of like other people like, latching onto it and becoming involved I'd say definitely like I've been involved with Palace Talk for a few years, I've been an uh, admin or moderator kind of thing for like a year. Yeah. I'd say definitely recently there's so many new people who are like clearly new on the scene kind of thing, sort of hopping on it, yeah. especially like in the past month or so. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd say it's definitely grown but at a quite steady rate, but then recently there's been like a massive influx of new people where there's like 
you know, a good few hundred people trying to join the group every day. Yeah. And, you know, asking questions like, what is this actually all about kind of thing, or I'm new to it. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right. I've definitely seen it from, like, a step back kind of thing with other people. Yeah. It's been quite interesting, really, just to see, actually, you know, how things are going and in which direction things are moving. Up till recently, I was kind of under the impression that, and I'm sure a lot of other people were as well, that a lot of the hype beasts, so to say, they were getting their money from their parents and they were just finding a lifestyle just to be cool. But after having spoken to you, you've kind of spoken about the more entrepreneurial side of it and how you buy bits to then sell on, things like that. Um, how do you feel about that in terms of the whole street we're thinking, the whole entrepreneurship? Do you think they go hand in hand most yeah. of the time? I mean, I'd say they would. Like Everyone's got to start somewhere. Like No one just picks money off the floor kind of thing. Yeah. Obviously, I'm sure a lot of people do start with their mum's money or, you know, borrowed money or Christmas money, birthday money kind of thing. I definitely did start, I, you know, I didn't, I, this, I never had a job kind of thing, so yeah, yeah, yeah. all my money's been made off this. Yeah. So I say I definitely started, you know, borrowing money off my dad or whatever, mm-hmm. just as anyone does these days. But th- there's there's definitely a separation between people who are like, just asking for money off their mum or dad or whatever, you know, being funded by someone else. Whereas people who are actually a bit more switched on kind of thing and like realise that, you know, if I start small, then I can grow bigger kind of thing. And I think there's a lot of people these days who have sort of flashed onto that and thought, you know, start small and then work my way up and then you do have your own money. Speaking with Jed showed me things in a different light. Not every young person sinking money into streetwear is doing it just to look cool on social media. Some are actually doing it as a way to earn themselves an income as opposed to getting a minimum wage job. But what about the other side of the coin? How does it affect streetwear brands and what do the staff working there think about the hype brand's growing popularity? In the past year or so, there's been a growing number of incidents at drops leading to stores having to beef up their security measures to keep trouble at bay. I wanted to know if all this hype was damaging the culture, and after a couple of phone calls and emails, we managed to get in touch with Pata London's general manager, Damien Melonti. I first came familiar with Pata when I was working for Gimme5, who um, they had a shop at the time called Hideout, which sold like Supreme, Palace, Visvim, Neighbourhood, Art Legacy, all good stuff, and we happened to stock Pata. I was the guy that was sort of doing the web orders and doing the pictures for the website. Yeah, yeah. So if anyone missed out on any orders, I'm sorry, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, my fault, I'm that guy. But yeah, so I was just basically in contact with the guys there just from that, just from needing restock or whatever I may need. Um, and uh, obviously I had friends. I've got a lot of family and friends in Holland as well. So I had some mutual friends that worked for them. And so I was like, hey, let's just do a pop-up store, yeah. which we did. And so I was the first one. I did it with my friend Sam and Bakar. And from there, we just kept in contact. Nice. They got a store, said, so like, hey, we want you to run it. So I'm like, cool, I did that. So, um, and in terms of how the, it's risen, uh, streetwear, well, I s- definitely there was sort of like a gap, I feel, with the streetwear. So when I was coming up with it, um, you know, between like 06 to like 09, when I was really like proper on my shit, mm. Um, it was sort of more of a community vibe, sort of more of a feel for it, like sort of, even though you may be wearing, I don't know, a Supreme tee or whatever, Stussy tee, mm-hmm. you didn't feel like cringing like it does today, like sort of, I feel like everyone's trying to not, almost like, trying to not wear this, you know, the same stuff, they want that mm-hmm. limited stuff, whereas it wasn't really about that, it's sort of just about, more about just, yeah, just more about the love of it, just yeah. lacking f- fly gear, whether or not someone else has it. Yeah. So even back then you see like, not everyone wearing the same clothes, like everyone would, Take bits and bobs and yeah, obviously make still, it their own. yeah, yeah, now make it their own. Where it's like now, so there's a, there's a fucking like a uniform for it or yeah, something. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? So, uh, so um, yeah, so that's sort of the main sort of thing that sort of helped for the rise, I guess. Just yeah. the fact that it's all about the hype and everyone just wanting you know the same gear. And obviously, social media is big now. Wasn't yeah. that big back then? So that's definitely helped to the rise. So um, yeah, younger kids are getting more clued up to it. Yeah. So that's obviously yeah, helped to the popularity. And why do you think it's so important? to be a part of the streetwear culture right now? Because everyone's kind of jumping on, I'm going to say bandwagon. Yeah. Why is it so important that everybody be a part of this scene right now, in this era? Mm, that's a good question. Um, it's, um, it's important that they jump on now, just because yeah, I feel like they, they, you know, they, may miss, they, they may miss the boat. I mean, because it's obviously a hype, such a big, industry now they may miss the boat so if they, they don't like if they don't jump on right yeah now, they're miss it yeah and exactly cool. yeah exactly you know what yeah. i mean so um even in terms you could look at even for power like a lot of these younger kids didn't know about power because obviously we stocked in hideout and obviously that show is now closed so there's a whole generation that don't know about that yeah, sort yeah. of stuff so even for us some people are like, oh power like what's mm-hmm. this kind of thing so it, um i feel like we came at the right time mm-hmm. you know obviously um 
and any later it could have been a bit more harder for us to sort mm. of get in the mix of I mean, things. You're solid right now. You're yeah, a solid, yeah, definitely. Stable brand right now, yeah. along like with Palace and Supreme. Yeah. So you're there. And definitely. You, just, you sell out mad. Yeah. Like, on releases, so yeah. you're doing something right. Yeah, it must be. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're hearing from a lot of young people that we've spoken to that they are getting their money from either parents or they're saving up yeah. their Christmas and birthday money. Yeah. When it comes to getting money from their parents, is this something, is this, is this a worry? Is it, is it worrying for the culture? Because it's like, the money's coming from the parents, do you know what I mean? It's not it's like self-sufficient money. Yeah, I hear it. Well, you know, each to their own, innit? You know what I mean? It's for, it's, you know, the brands like Patter or whoever, you know, they're for everyone. So if it's for the kid that's selling one pound cookies, I don't know, or sweets in the playground. Mm. If it's for the guy who's buying that one shoe, reselling it and mm. investing his money, that's cool. If it's for the guys with the parents. I mean, I don't think it. I don't think it really matters or it ruins anything if you know if these if you know guys from it could be a better background or mm. whatever wearing this stuff as long as you know they got their own style to it and you mm. know they, everyone is just getting along basically. Just you know, I'd rather have kids going crazy over this stuff instead of. There's so many other distractions out there that they could be doing, so it's good that they're putting their passion into clothing, whether yeah. it's for them to do their own shoots. You see guys on Instagram doing that outfit, whether or not you like it, but yeah. at least they've you know, they got a camera, they're doing something, yeah. you know what I mean? So who knows where that could take them, so. And what would you say is the most damaging thing to the culture? Uh, definitely, I'd say just the resale thing, man. Mm. Um, I mean, I don't involve it myself. Even when I was on the trainers when I was younger in uni, mm. I never, I never got pairs that you know just to flip them. I just mm. bought them to wear them. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's definitely the main thing that's destroying and you know giving a bad light to the culture. Because even though you know there's certain guys, okay, you can't get your pairs, but when you've got people that are queuing up crazy, like pushing, shoving, mm. you got mandem coming down and. Now you need a whole security barricade. That's bad for the culture, you know. Whereas before, maybe guys would, you know, queue up, chill, whatever for the night. But now you can't do that. Now there's no queue. There's no queuing overnight. It's straight all this raffle stuff. So, resale is definitely a, a big issue for the culture. That I know brands are working hard to sort that shit out. So yeah, Hopefully yeah. Works. yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed. And the last question. So, in terms of longevity, how long do you see the hype brands being at the forefront of streetwear culture? Because I mean. Ten years ago, definitely my day, we was on like Gucci, yeah, and Louis, yeah. And it, there's been a, like a shift now. Yeah. It's obviously Supreme, Patter and Palace off white. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What do you, in terms of longevity, what do you see streetwear being in ten years? What are, what do you see the hype thing being? Do you think it will still be the same kind of brands, or Ooh. will there be another shift? I know. Could you think um, as much as that? Sun can only get bigger until it bursts. Mm. You know what I mean? So. Um, Right now, I don't. I feel like certain brands they have to do a lot wrong to get to lose this following because it seems like they've got these people hooked on. You know what I mean? Um, where do I see it going in the next ten years? I don't know. It's tricky because it could follow the same pattern in terms of what I feel my sort of age range is, which is maybe uh, you know you like your pattern, you like your stussy, mm. um, and then you sort of you know you might put you might grow out of that and put on some our legacy jeans or a Norse project t-shirt mm -hmm. or whatever i don't know mm -hmm. so um it'll be that would be interesting to see like the pattern that it goes on to whether the kids find their own style or whether they just stick to they're loyal to the brands more than you know trying mm -hmm. to find their own style but I, I, it's hard to predict man i'm i don't i don't claim to be that knowledgeable mm -hmm. <laughs> guy of prediction and look like an idiot when i play it back but yeah. um I'll just say it'll be interesting to see if, as I said, they get older, they find their own style, mm. less maybe logo-based stuff, or they mm. stick to, I'm just gonna be with a Supreme hoodie all my flipping adult, young adult <laughs> life or whatever. Box so, yeah. until you're exactly, yeah. exactly. So yeah, that'll be interesting to see. I can't call it though which way it's gonna go. Damien did a great job at putting things into perspective, but one more question that I needed to find out was what's next for streetwear? For the final segment of our documentary, we spoke to London-based Australian designer Alexandra Hackett, better known by her online alias Mini Swoosh, about the rise of the culture and where it's heading. You've been making quite a name for yourself in the streetwear community over here in the last few years, um, but particularly because you're like love affair with Nike. Mm. How did that start? How did it come about? Um. I'm kind of like a Nike like purist. Yeah. Um, that's like basically the only brand I wear. With Nike, it kind of started because when I studied at uni, I was working at a factory outlet. Yeah. So I was just like there every other weekend doing stock. And I kind of just like 
I don't know, fell in love with the whole brand. I like Nike for two different reasons. So I majored in sportswear design. So I'm like a huge like fan of sportswear and everything that has a function. And I think Nike really is like the epicenter of practical design, like for the athlete. Yeah. Every construction technique, fabrication, design line is designed specifically for a purpose yeah. for the athlete. So there's that side of Nike. And then there's the whole branding side of Nike. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything that they stand for as a company, like all of their mantras, like there is no finish line, just do it, anything like that. I just find like hugely inspiring for anyone in a creative industry or really any industry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's you've kind of taken that ethos on board. Yeah, it's like the ethos combined with like how they apply practicality to clothing design. Look at the, the scene from a different perspective. How would you describe the rise of brands like Pata, Palace and Supreme among the younger generation and obviously our generation as well? I think people want a connection to a brand. They want to have some sort of affiliation or involvement in that whole sense of community. So people really levitate towards brands that they have in their community or that other people are wearing as a form of communication between like like-minded people. I think, I mean, especially in Soho, people accumulate around these stores and it's like a whole like cultural hub. Yeah. People like to compare, you know, what they've got, um, what they're going to get. It's, it's like a talking point. Yeah. I mean, it does kind of all base on a sense of con consumerism, yeah. which maybe really shouldn't be endorsed. Yeah. But that whole idea of like communicating and really like connecting with other people through these brands, I think is the most important thing. Okay. Um, I think with Palace and Supreme, that sort of grew on like that whole skating community. Yeah. Um, for me, I don't really wear either of those brands. I only really wear Nike. But I think if you have some sort of relationship towards the brand and the people there, yeah. I think that makes the garments worth more, okay. if that makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, a few people that I've spoken to have mentioned the fact that people that they listen to music, for example, like you've got ASAP Rocky and mm. Travis Scott, because they're doing it, it's kind of like, right, I want to aspire to almost emulate my heroes and my idols. And that's why they're doing it. You think that, that plays a massive part in it? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, you can look at uh, like the brand Kahu. They weren't really on the radar. I mean, they make great product. And then I remember watching it happen in store. Like they're like really great shoes, like really unique. And then all of a sudden Kanye West wore them one day. Up, yeah. yeah, and it was like this brown and blue colorway and they sold out like the next day on the yeah. shelves. I remember seeing them before that. And then being like, I mean, it's great for that sort of brand, yeah, like yeah. for that sort of exposure to happen. Yeah. But I think the influence of celebrities and musicians on streetwear culture is something interesting to watch. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think a big role, um, I think branding plays a huge role. I mean, just wearing like the name of a brand. So having a shirt that says Supreme, yeah. having something that says Palace, yeah. that has like a sense of value. Yeah. And especially like in today's society where a lot um, of emphasis is placed on social media. Yeah. It's just when you wear those sorts of brands and you have that name on you, you can like you immediately recognize yourself as that sort of person or you're interested in this sort of product and you're probably interested in this type of lifestyle and it's kind of like, it's how people express themselves. Okay. And branding is, goes hand in hand with social media. Definitely. You don't have to say anything, you're j just wearing that brand. Yeah, so most, perhaps the most important question is where do you see the future of streetwear going now? Because as you can see, it's mainly our generation, probably young, the younger generation that are heavily into it at the moment. But what do you think is going to happen when they move on and say like 10 years time? Do you think it's still going to be as big as it is now? Do you think the next generation are going to take it on? Or is it going to be something else but going to be another fad? I don't really think it's going to be a fad. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, you can, if you look at, you can't really compare the last 10 years of streetwear to the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. I just think it's changed so rapidly, especially with social media, that it could never just go back or come in a wave. Yeah. Like, I know branding... Um, and logos always comes in waves. So there'll be a time when everyone really wants like a huge like box logo. They like want to be quite expressive about what they're wearing. And then we'll go through phases where they only want something tiny, if anything. Yeah. I mean, that's just normal. That's just normal with all fashion trends. Yeah. Um, but in terms of streetwear, I just can't see it going away. 
Yeah, I think more so what I was trying to get at was obviously the fact that when I was 14, for example, I wasn't mm. like streetwear, didn't even know about Palace and Supreme and Pata, but now I know about it and people a little younger than me, so our generation know about it, but do you think the next generation will follow on? Do you think it'll be a... I mean, you can see it now. Yeah. It's like 12-year-olds. We did, th- I think there's been three releases of the Air Max 97. Yeah. And I remember on the third release, basically 90% of the people who came through were kids, 14, 15 year olds. Wow. I mean, that is the third release, but I think that's kind of an indication of where streetwear's going. Yeah. People were, com- like kids were coming in with their parents, like everyone was trying on the shoes because they wanted to purchase them. I mean, they pro- obviously couldn't get access to the product in the first or second release. Yeah, yeah. But then by the third time, you're looking at like this whole different like market. Yeah. Like 12, 13 year olds. It's crazy. Um, I was 12, 13, I was wearing like, well, I don't know, apples. But I think it's kind of, it's that whole like sense of like wanting to belong, I think. That whole idea of community and wanting to be a part of something. I really don't see streetwear slowing down. Yeah, but I, just, I think because in terms of where I kind of tie streetwear and music in together. Mm. So in 10 years time, ASAP Rocky, well, he might still be ASAP Rocky, but I would see him in the, in the 10 years, perhaps not on the same wave as he is now. Yeah. So obviously if people are emulating ASAP Rocky and in 10 years time, he's not doing that anymore. The next generation are going to be looking towards new musicians and new artists in the scene to be carrying on the, sh- on the street where you think mm. perhaps. So that could potentially lead to a, a shift in what people are wearing and what brands they're leaning towards. Yeah, I mean, definitely I think brands will come and go, yeah. but I still think like the whole concept of streetwear is just always going to be there. I mean, if people aren't wearing streetwear in 10 years time, what are they going to be wearing? I just think like for me, streetwear is kind of that whole combination of sportswear and just like everyday clothing. Like that's for me what it is. And I think that the way that people dress like that is always going to exist. There's always going to be one like people who want to connect with each other through clothing. Um, There's always going to be like that level that exists in like the streetwear bubble. I mean, it may change, the whole aesthetic may change, but you can already see that it is completely different. I mean, Supreme does a collaboration with North Face and the next week with Levi's. Yeah, it's... So this whole scope of it, I mean, you're looking at like techie like clothing for the like slopes. And then the next week it's like denim. Yeah. And both are considered streetwear. Yeah. So I think the whole spectrum of streetwear is like so broad. Yeah, if it was more narrow, if it was just printed tees, yeah. and I'd be like, mm, maybe that may pass. Yeah. But it's but just so it's broad. Hard yeah. Yes. Fair and somehow, like these brands are able to take any element of clothing design and make it street. At present, it seems that no one knows where streetwear will end up in 10 years' time, but Mini Swoosh sums things up nicely. Streetwear will always keep changing and evolving, but I guess only time will tell what's in store for not only young hype beasts, but the hype brands too.